you're doing with these, yeah, with these mid stack, short stack strategies is by and large waiting for waiting for your big hands and playing them strong. And I mean, that's more or less it. We do pick up kings over here. It makes it a bit more likely that um, eh, that somebody might have an ace, give us some action. JK, let's see what happens. Here we are going to pot it in a bit. Mm, here we're going. Uh, uh, you can't squeeze that, but I think I'll just let that go. And it's clean on the button. Yeah, so not a lot's changed actually. We are. Okay, we're flat. Again, you can raise that up, but it's an undergun raiser. And you can also just fold that, guys. You can also just fold that straight with this strategy. Um, I got position, however. And. Yeah, let's see. I mean, the float lines, again. It's, it's much more lucrative when you're big stacked. Uh, float bluff, stuff like that. And here, we're just, you know, no draw whatsoever. Um, you know, when, you, when you're floating, um, or when you're making bluff bluff moves, it's always good if you do have some kind of at least backdoor draw kind of uh, option there. Uh, best case is, you know, semi-bluffing. And, you know, we have eight outs or better. At least overs on non scary boards, uh, not connected, non suited, stuff like that. You want to have a little more going for you than just pure full liquidity, as again we defined in relatively great detail here in the last video. Here I'm just going to overlimp, uh, keep it cheap here, baby ace suited, flat one versus the min rays, and dunk out. Take that down. All right, so we flat, um, and this guy decides to isolate us limpers here, and that's one. You know, um, I'm calling two fifty here on the seven, two three, you know, more or less three to one, a little less, and yeah, dominated so often. It's just a real funky spot. Jack queens, every position fold, fives fold, and we will play on here with our full domania. Ace 10 will be a steel raise if it gets to us. And 10 jack might as well. Uh, let's re steal this one. 3 exit versus a min raise steal there. And that does, yeah, that's, I mean, that's news to me. Uh, he min raise and then min raise shoves as a 4 bat. Ace 10, you just toast, so right? Not on our pairs of tens or ace queen call list as we had discussed. And I think, guys, with this, I mean, you've you've seen now quite a bit of what we had covered in the theoretical section. Uh, you've seen how tight it is playing the. Um, that's actually not on the list. Um, yeah, playing the short stack ranges also in the six max environment. Um, Yet the <laughs> Alright, he min bets, we take a shot and see if he's full of shit or not. And he only flats. Yeah, bummer. Right. That's gonna lead me to believe that he actually probably picked up one of these two here. Lucky little devil. We check behind here and hope to see a free showdown if he checks again. Maybe like a under pair of fives or something like that. Uh, but I can't bet that um, in this spot. Turn my hand into a pure bluff. I got showdown value. Three queen, well. <laughs> yeah, welcome to low stakes poker, guys. Alrighty. Again, yeah, I don't think if I bet that either on the river that he's gonna fold. So, yeah, uh, back to play. We again, you've seen quite a lot, pretty much everything. I think that we needed to show you guys concerning small mid stack play. Uh, Forzies again with um, knowing how wide these guys. Open raise, you can also shove it. Let's let's do a shove here, just to show you guys with the baby pair. You lose so much equity on the flop with these with these small pockets. So if he's on over cards here, we're ahead, and he just lets it go. All right, and hoping for action. Nope. All right, pure bluff. Could also make that half pot. Two suited board. He check calls, and here we go. Addition money with non showdown value. 
None spade. If he checks again, I'll take a shot on the river. Uh, again here. Let's raise her up. Does and yeah. Hoping that he misses a flush draw and lets it go. Be a really good result here. Wow, excellent. In position, longer ball bluff. <laughs> Taking a shot on the flop, getting the turn in the river for free. And yeah, good result. Put him on a miss flush draw, and we were probably correct. And take it down in position after that final check. If he had bet it, you know, um, on the river, then as a block bet, for example, which is why you should make those block bet uh, plays both when you're bluffing and when you have uh, showdown value. And I would probably let that go. Uh, you can also then, of course, re raise a block bet. And another pair of aces. Man, oh man. The only problem is, I mean, yeah, we're, we're catching some actually, actually decent hands. We're just making a lot of play on them. Uh, let's see, and and also here, unfortunately, we're uh, more short stacked than normal, which is a bit of a bummer. But three exit as a re-steal with your good hands and also your speculation. Come on, not a another pair of sixes, guys. Another pair of sixes. I think that's like the sixtieth uh, pair of sixes we've had here. And all right, one time, lucky number six for set value. Get there. Ah, we are whiffing so unbelievably hard. Nineties. We said it was a pot. Wasn't it? He bets it. We fold it. No set. No bet. All right, that's good. A lot of calls, and of course we miss our set. <laughs> and I'm not going to go see betting here in a two players out of position with my under pair of nines on a paired board. Especially not without stats, but they both check. Alright, so half pot it. See if they can let it go. They cannot. Let's hope he's on a king, queen, and misses here. <laughs> and also the king, queen would have hit. And we are just completely toast here. And I missed. Actually, I missed that. Did we take that down? I'll be damned. Huh. Called us the river with the under pair of fives. And yeah, hmm. didn't expect that at all. Not even in that spot. And again, you know, you guys see that that guy actually, again, the turn bet was good. Um, after that weakness and the fact that he flatted is of course disgusting and it, you know if you're making that flat guys uh, in position then when yeah the river comes then after a check from from my side it not always but very often a good it's a good spot for you to go ahead and take a take a shot in position right to knock me off that hand um, the the other thing is yeah Again, I could have been also on the king, queen, myself, ace, king, something like that. And yeah, he opts. He opts to check behind um, because he does have showdown value. Here we just flat one in position. Uh, also with the set, no, we're too light here. Stack wise, uh, here we just call that. A miss, a miss, a miss, a miss, a miss, a miss. Okay, check behind, we take a shot on the turn, spade comes, and the king, and we are more than likely toast. Yeah. So again, you know, you can you can find another bet there on the river when the spade doesn't fall or when a small card falls, non non Broadway. Um, but when the guy yeah flats you then in position on the turn and a spade and a Broadway card hit. Here we isolate the limper here. Um, yeah, then you don't want to go double, triple barrel in very often into that. All right, uh, 19, yep, set by you. Wow, we are running really, really low on the old set percentage. Uh, check raise is also an option here, right? Um, 
maybe something like this. But again, we'll let that go. All right, and follow up here after the isolation paired kings. It's less likely that he's got it. He checks it again, and we probably got hosed yet again. I can also shove this right here, but yeah, after the limp call, then the check call on the on the turn. Hmm. I've got the ace. Um, and fold equity. Let's see what he does. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That was probably the only way I was going to take that down. Unless he's on a weaker ace, which is unlikely. Yay! We got another bonus here in my bet. And yes, I would like to play again. And I'd like to actually hit one of these sets. <laughs> to wrap up our complete series here guys um, do hope you enjoyed it this is Dylan again um, as you all well know um, six max coaching here at the storm tables for my bet and I hope it's been if nothing else very entertaining and hopefully also very educational uh, for most of you players out there all right the old Inside straight draw on a two-suited board out of position. <laughs> oh wow! We actually turn a set. We okay. We can't flop a set, but we can turn them. That's nice. All right, and we're hoping that he's on a king. Uh, two pairs on the other. All right, and here we go. And I want to get paid, so just over half pot it. And I'll be doing this as a bluff too. And our full house was good. So we're over the 25 mark, and we can check out there and come back in for a fresh 40. Yeah, so I'd really like to end the entire uh, Riders of the Storm series here on a flop set. I mean, that's a decent, you know, turned uh, full house hand. Something spectacular should be the last hand of this very long series here. I think we've made well over 10 hours for you guys. I think maybe even 11 or 12 hours in the entire series, depending on how uh, my bet decides to publish it. And as always, you know, we're here for you guys. If you got any questions or comments, feel free definitely to contact us uh, via YouTube, YouTube channel there at any time. Yeah, let's check out here. And back we are here again with the minimum buy-in, playing the hybrid strategy, the mid-stack strategy. In and out, hit and run. And you know, reducing your range as your stack decreases, increasing your range, incorporating more, uh, incorporating more big stack strategy plays um, as your stack then increases. Uh, very typical range or very typical strategies of course then checking out uh, once you're over 55 big blinds or playing on again as you as you would as a normal big stack big stack player bigger stack player all right on the button here 79 one gapper suited Okay, flop mid pair and the flush draw. 17 left. If he bets, we shove. And if he doesn't, we make a hefty semi bluff C bet right here. And let's re steal this one too. Ah, timed out. Probably a good thing. <laughs> and we take that down with our semi bluff. Positional play there in a steel battle. Flopping a really high equity hand here. And yet again, get all ace queen offsuit, right? The last time we said, you know, if it's if it's off suit, we'll just let it go or yeah, raise fold strategy. And yeah, this time we'll just opt for the fold. Yeah. Again, you can raise that up, guys. You can flat a your on the button. Um, but just to give you an idea of how how you would then use that, you know, suited the determining factor with these yeah speculative hands. That would be that would be it. Just to follow up on a 
principle that I mentioned earlier. All right, it's 68 suited here. We can flat it. Um, min raise, okay, again, semi bluff it out. We flat the min raise steel donk into the uh, into the flop here, two suited, and isolate the under the gun limper. And anytime there's an under gun limp raise, guys, um, expect queens are better. Maybe ace king when they limp re raise. You know, it's just it's just tough. Um, when they come back over the top, check. We pick up the uh, left flush draw to boot. Another check, and we, we take it down here with a semi bluff on the turn. All right, baby A suited. Still no dice here down low. AJ will raise up if it's folded to us. Okay, you don't go re-raising under the gun raises here with your baby aces. And pot a lot it. Jackknife, not good. Yeah, and again guys, yes, <laughs> mid-stack strategy play, um, you know, shorter stack strategy play, you're not playing a lot of hands. And you gotta have the patience for that. Here you can flat, right? But I'm not closing the betting. One of these guys can re-raise this, and I'm sitting in the soup again with my nines. So, again, you know, raise general raise or fold strategy is not a bad option. Um, incorporating then your flats, your overcalls, overlimp stuff like that when you're on the cutoff of the button is typically a good way to do that. Uh, the earlier you are, the less you want to be calling in general. Ace nine suited. Um, still here with the suited ace nine and again the reason I'm doing this without stats is that it's suited um, and that's going to reduce the amount of times that I actually re-steal here with that relatively weak hand and we do take it down and contest it. Early position razor. Duck out guys. There we go. Three and a half exit king that uh, ace king suited and off suited, top and bottom. We'll see what happens. Again, if this one's limped around, you know, I find that over limp here, a complete, um, but not much more. Yeah, five to one odds. See what flops. He checked. We opt for the delayed C back here. Um, and if he bets out, then we probably let that go. We flop top pair here. Um, decent kicker, backdoor flush draw, uh, probably more of a blocker in that case. Take it down here with our delayed C bet on the turn. Take it down here with our complete bet the flop line, and we play on. So again, 79 was a raise right from late position as a steal, unopened, but not from early mid. All right, pure bluff here as a re-steal versus the min raise. Uh, as a steal on the button. And yeah, also also mid and small stack, you can re-raise that with cheese from time to time. Just don't make that your standard play, especially without stats. the weak ace here we isolate three or four times plus one per limber um, with that raise we buy the position also and don't want to see a limp re-raise again right limp re-raise is a auto fold uh, three suited we're gonna have more fold equity in general each checks we bet it suited ace eight well flop overs and the flush draw and here we go yeah he check raises all in and I've only got the eight, so that's all she wrote. This one I want to make a stronger, stronger bet here, even versus these players, because I'm building the pot here. Uh, if they come over the top, I can also shove uh, with really decent equity on my draw here, my nut flush draw plus outside straight draw stuff like that. A lot of dead money in the middle.
Ooh, ouch. <laughs> he had the uh, flop set of sixes, but again, you know, we have, you know, we don't lose a lot of equity there. We've got still 30-something uh, percent plus fold equity. Um, if he's on an over pair, right, uh, that's under our ace, we're still, we're still looking pretty good there. To end this entire series, cross your fingers that we uh, catch a few exciting hands to close this thing up in proper my bet style. Ace king suited is muted. Ace eight, open raise it. Here's our three bet. Take it down. And yeah, there's also a bit of a lag here. All right, so we got a good squeeze spot, and we're small stacks, so we shove. All right, so we good. We got at least our uh, our three bet squeeze play here as a small stack uh, player, and yeah, run into queens. Unfortunately, queens only flatted. By the way, that would be a place to make a note if you're actually playing at this level uh, consistently. And yeah, he only flatted, hoping that I would do exactly that. And I was I was short stacked, shoved. And again, you're gonna have a lot of fold equity when you do that. Um, and yeah, ahead of all over, over cards, uh, all under pairs. You're looking really good there in that spot, and didn't work out. So again, here, shove this one versus the min raise, and take it down. Again, smaller stacked. Ace jack is just too light, right? Ace queens are better. Um, Paranize a better early position under the gun. So again, off suited, um, let that go. Uh, suited here, I might find a complete or actually just the flat versus the min raise, but or resteal. But off suited again as our little factor to get us out of many more marginal spots. Yeah, we're all suited, so we let that go. All right, early position razor, ace 10 is no good. Um, running flush draw, bottom pair, running straight draw. However, we have position, he checks, we represent the ace with our C bet here. And pick up another diamond to our draw. So we check behind, get two cards for the price of one. And get hosed. And let's see how he reacts here on the river. This could be a bluff induced line from him as well. He checks again, and he may call us down with like a weak ace. Um, but I'm going to take a shot here and hold my breath. Pair of kings, yeah. Okay. So it was a it was a bluff induced line, like we had we had assumed. Of course, we didn't uh, didn't just check behind because we didn't have any showdown value. We we'll take a shot there after the weakness again, and you know we didn't shove it. Um, you're going to have more equity when you do shove, but it's going to be a higher variance play again without stats. Who knows? And yeah, that was that was actually different. A really difficult call for him, even with kings. Oh, okay. For thinking players, it's a difficult call. Um, but he does make the call, and it was correct. And yeah, unfortunately, we missed. All right, lucky sixes. Maybe we can end it right here, guys. Under the gun, raise it up. We flat on the button, and we're looking for our set maybe to end the entire series. Cross your fingers. And el diablito, one time. Actually, the other guy had the pair of sixes, right, and then quad it up on the turn, didn't he? Uh, so we've already seen it, but it wasn't uh, wasn't on our side. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, that's that's the uh, that's the play. We're gonna we're gonna continue on here until we flop a set, <laughs> and that'll be the last end. All right, we isolate the limper here. This time, four times plus one. Only had one limper here. There's a twos. Daddy needs a new pair of twos. Come on, give me a couple limps here. Yeah, 
the steel race here. And Athena. All right, big squeeze. Suited is the reason I'm making that squeeze. That's ace two offsuit. I'm gonna let that go without stats. And I could have probably just shoved it. But again, we want to be shoving tens are better and ace queen um, because we know we're gonna have good uh, good equity also when we get called in general. With that squeeze, we're gonna take it down as you guys have seen so many times even in this uh, this very video. So when we make that yeah, three X there, uh, we can bet fold with the weak ace when he comes over the top. Alright, here we go. Sixes yet again. I think there are 45 sixes in this deck. And we flop, well, uh, inside straight draw and the nut flush draw. Mm, who knows, maybe the ace is good. And here we re-steal for sure. 18 on that pot. Check this one out. That's a big old semi-bluff shove on the flop. And get in just behind. Damn, um, no dice on the draws. Yeah, we could have also just flatted. Um, played it for pot odds there. That's also possible, but yeah, just to give you guys yeah, one final idea, you can make those, especially with your, with your strong draws like that. Um, you can make those moves for sure, and I think that's yeah, it's a very profitable move, a profitable move in the long run as well. A lot of fold equity, um, and you get a lot of lot of equity as such in general. All right, guys, and again, yeah, we're looking for that. Hopefully, first and final set, uh, flop set with the pocket pair to end this session. All right, re steal here, three exit with our tens, and it could have also been a shove at that point. Nice, get it in good. There's our set, looks good. Wow, flop the full house. All right, this is definitely the hand to end it on. Uh, that's beautiful. And yeah, take this big pot down relatively soon. Another ace, nice. <laughs> Okie doke. Let's just hope we get a little action. And we'll end the series here, that's too good. All right, 11 bones for all the marbles, guys, and to end the Riders of the Storm series, let's shove with our quad aces. And get called. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And just see what that guy had. I don't know if it was actually in the in the video or not, but he called us all the way down with the jack. And he maybe, you know, he's well, actually five times his initial stack size. Which is a pretty damn good result here at NL50 by anyone's standards, and he knows how unlikely it is that um, that we have that ace, and also how unlikely it is that he's out kicked here with the jack, and yeah, good setup, great final hand to end this series. So that concludes the Storm Poker Challenge and our Riders of the Storm series for MyBet.com. Uh, again, this is Dylan. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was definitely useful for your game. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again soon here for our next series. If you have any requests that we cover specific topics, maybe sit and go strategy, for example, other game types, uh, full ring, whatever, again, just drop us a line at any time and we'll see what we can do. On behalf of the entire My Bet Poker team, I'd like to wish you all the best, both on and off the felt. Till then.